Hey everybody, Jared here, and today we are gonna edit a Zoom recording in Premiere Pro. Now, Premiere Pro is an advanced video editing program, and if you've never worked in Premiere Pro before, if you've never worked in any video editing program before, I wouldn't start in Premiere Pro, but I wanna show some really fun things that we can do while fixing this video. So what's the video, you ask? Well, a friend of mine is a professor, and he was recording a Zoom meeting, and in addition to his window popping up, several of his students' windows popped up, and of course, we don't wanna have their recordings in the video. Now, the video you're gonna watch is gonna have been post-processed one one more time so I am going to blur out their faces in my video when I'm showing you how to cut out their faces in his video so if you're wondering why it looks blurry I added it in post in post in post all right let's get started so first things first in Premiere Pro I'm gonna create a new project and I need to make sure I point to where that project is gonna be and I'm gonna put this in my downloads folder in my Charlie folder because I made a Charlie folder before we started and I'm gonna select the folder in addition to that it's gonna ask me what is the name of my project and everybody always forgets to name their project so they have a lot of untitled projects but I'm gonna call this zoom edit could have called it whatever you want but call it something the rest of this you can leave alone and I'm going to click OK and it's going to launch Premiere Pro. It takes a few minutes to get it all set up, set up a little temp files, get the whole thing set up straightforward. Now Premiere Pro is a lot of windows, I'm not going to lie, but the big one we have over here is the timeline. We have our preview window, we have our little boxes where we can see our effects controls, we have our effects, and then more importantly over here, we have our media browser and where we can actually bring import our media to start. Now I can come over here and I can right click and I can say import. And when I do that, I'm going to browse for the film and I'm going to open it and it's going to open up there. Now there's the film and I know for a fact that um, it has the video in it. I'm not going to play it just yet. I'm actually going to jump in for a really cool way of doing this. Right click and you can say new sequence from clip. And what that will do is it will automatically create a project with the exact settings of the video clip that you had. This way you don't have to figure out what kind of project you want to set up. It's already set up perfectly for you. Now the good news is, is that when he started making his video, there were no students in it at all. And actually the students only pop up around six minutes into the video. So I'm gonna leave off going there for a moment. And oh, actually, no, I'll go there and I'll just have to blur them out later. So what happens is if I go six minutes in, you're going to see that right over here, there's a box. The professor is up in the in the left hand corner. But all of this, I want to go away. Matter of fact, I don't need any of this video right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop the video in its entirety. It's really straightforward to do. I'm going to come over to my video effects. And under my video effects, you're going to see the word adjust, but that's not for this one. You, what you want to go to is transform. And it's always fun to show you. There's adjust and there's transform. One of them is the content. One of them is the bigger shape. You take the effect and you drag it onto the timeline. Drag it onto the timeline. And there is my crop has been added. On the left side, you're going to see under effects controls, in addition to all the other parameters, I now have a crop. And because I want to crop the right side of my screen, I come over here to my right and I can drag this and crop the window in as far as I like. And there it is. It's been cropped. And now from here to the end of my video is a nice black box. Voila. Now I could stop here and I could finish there, but I want to do something a little bit nicer. I actually don't want to lose the professor's video. I actually like the idea that professor is in the video. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do something kind of fun here. And that is I'm going to grab the video file and I'm going to drag it back out onto the timeline. So now I have the video twice, once cropped and once uncropped. And look, there they are again. So what I need to do now, if I hit play, it's going to be weird because you're going to hear the audio twice. And we'll see it spits out cats. I don't want to hear the audio twice. So for this clip, I'm going to right click and I'm going to unlink the audio from the video. And now the video is up here and the audio is down here and I can delete that. So I only have one copy. The other one is I can right click over here and I can rename the clip, which is very useful. So I can say this was with students removed and this one I can rename and say just the professor just the professor of course it isn't just the professor but we're gonna make it just the professor because I'm going to crop the top one 
And when I do that, if I come over here and start to crop to the left, you're not going to see anything. You're like, why am I not seeing anything? Well, that's because when I crop it, it doesn't make it black. It makes it invisible, which means you can see through. Let me turn off the track one. So now I've hidden it. And now if I crop to the left, you will now see that I've cropped all the way to the left. And if I cropped from the bottom, I can crop all the way to the bottom. And if I do that, and I turn the video back on, you'll see that now I have the teeny little professor video. Teeny little professor video. So I've got my teeny little professor video, just the prof. So I'm gonna come over here to scale, and I'm gonna make the scale bigger. Of course, when I do that, it kind of runs away. See how it's running away from me? That happens because the video is far away. Let me come over here and zoom this down to 25%. So if I double click on this video, I can move it towards the middle and then I can make it bigger. See, it always is going from the big from the middle, but that's okay. I don't want to make it too big because it really is low res. But now if I put that up in the corner like that, that's good. And I click on fit and I rewind and... Okay, so today we're going to talk about chapters five to nine. And so now we have the one problem, and that is, is that I've, his video doesn't show up until about six minutes in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move until the video pops up. There's the video, and all I have to do is crop this video, and I do that by grabbing the end and rolling it into place. So now it's not there. And you want to break when you get to the very last line of the file single day constantly as data is coming from that and we want to pull that and we're going to scroll real fast to make sure everything looks good so we got a little bit more of a talking head video of course my talking head video is in the bottom i'm right over here and that's because i'm not recording this in zoom i'm recording this in obs so it's kind of a different sort of thing if he was recording it in a non-live zoom session i wouldn't have him record it in zoom at all i'd have him use my obs tutorial to create the obs with the video but he was doing it live and it's better for his students that way and so there you go and now it's done so now that we've done that so again i've gone through i've cropped the one video I cropped the other video, made it larger, and put it over, overlaid it, gotten rid of the second audio file. So now that I'm happy with the way everything looks and sounds and all that type of good stuff, I need to export the video. So if I come over here, file, let me make sure I'm in the right window. Always click this window first. You've got to be in the timeline window if you're going to export. File, and then I hit export, media. Now when I do this, it's going to bring me up the uh, options of how I want to export my media. And the first thing it says, it says match source high bit rate. And I can do that. I can just literally leave it match source high bit rate. And what that means is the original sequence was this, the final sequence is this, and the file is going to be 4.4 gigabytes. And the original file is 272 megabytes. It's an hour long video. No matter how you slice it, Premiere is going to try to give you a nice quality video. Now, generally, what I do at this point is I upload it to YouTube and I let YouTube compress it back down, uh, and it does a pretty good job with that, or I put it on Google Drive and just don't deal with the, 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 the size of it. But that's about it, and there's very little else I can do. So I'm just going to go with the match source high bit rate and leave it at 4.4 gigabytes, and then I'm going to change this from Zoom 1 MP4 to Zoom 1 MP4 Edit, Save, and now I will hit export. If I hit Q, by the way, why don't I show you Q? It's always a cool thing to show you. If I hit Q, instead of immediately starting and saving the video, it's going to throw the project inside of the Adobe Media Encoder. Now, this is very useful because what I can do is I can have multiple projects that I've queued up, which I've done right over here. It's all queued up to go. It's, you're not ready. It's coming up now. Come on. Load into Adobe. And then once it's queued up, I can have a stack of videos, even from the same project, I can have a stack of videos all going to where I want it to go to. And when I'm done, I hit run. The nice thing about this is if I hit start queue, and I'll let it start the queue, it's going to start uh, processing the video. 
It says it's going to take about oh, 15 minutes. Not bad for an hour long video, but because it's inside of the Adobe Media Encoder, I actually can go back to Premiere Pro and finish up whatever I'm doing. I can actually be editing another video, saving this project, doing other types of cool things. And that, in a nutshell, is what we do here. So again, we use the crop command and you saw that. And then we also made things bigger and layered things and all sorts of good stuff. So this is sort of a basic overview of the kind of things that you can do in Premiere Pro. If you've never worked in Premiere Pro before, this is not the tutorial for you. This is sort of the what is the trick I use for editing a Zoom video in Premiere Pro. And yes, it's going to blow up in size. That's what happens. Zoom does a very, very compressed codec and Premiere is assuming that you're working with video video. Anyway, my name's Jared. Thanks for watching. Oh, one last thing. When you watch your version of this video, all the faces are going to be blurred because I had to take the video that I just made, load it into Premiere Pro to blur the videos so that you could watch the video and not betray anybody's trust. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just reach out.